September 6, 2017. It's uh, sunny and 20 degrees and it's about 11.30 a.m. and the bees are pretty active. And I'm just gonna get a record of this. <clears throat> they're cooking and they're gonna be cooking more later on today so I'm gonna open up that top uh, hive, the top of the hive, so it's like a big open wide open hive because they were really crowding that top entrance last night or yesterday and down there you can see they're already getting the fanning action on the go so I'm just gonna open that up because I've had that somewhat closed because of wasps hanging around so I'm, I'm gonna open it up just to give them so they don't have to do as much work and yesterday I noticed when I um, when I opened up the top entrance wide open, um, they just disappeared from the bottom. <clears throat> so it really must have just helped with the ventilation. There we go. Hey, little buddy. So I'm gonna just open this up right now, try not to get stung. That's good enough. There's a little bit of a thing over there, but it's fine. It was uh, 18 degrees last night, and that's hot for this time of year. Um, this colony is definitely peaking right now. Um, down here, we got a load of bees uh, that are fanning and ventilating that hive big time. And they were like that yester yesterday too, <clears throat> even though a week or so before, there were hardly any bees there down on the bottom. I think what happened was there was the the queen was down there. She'd laid her eggs and they were just hanging around the brood, but the brood hatched out and so the bees disappeared. So now the bees are back and it's one of two things. It's either the the heat that's uh, they're forcing them to go down below and just to cool off the, to create ventilation in the hive, or it's. Um, the queen is stuck down there. There's so much honey in the hive that the queen has nowhere else to lay, so she's laying down on the bottom again, and they're they're cooling off. The, 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 the nurse bees are down there, but they're also cooling off the hive down there just to regulate the temperature for the brood. Could be a lot of things. <clears throat> um, and I've done this for the past couple of days. Uh, I opened up the top entrance while the, I slid the inner cover which is this green thing down this way a bit so that there's a big crack open up, up open up the front there and so they can come and go a lot quicker and it'll help ventilate the hive better um, I thought about removing the um, the inner cover and just using the the empty um, moisture quilt as ventilation so it would just be completely open more or less on top but um, I think giving them that extra space to come and go the foragers uh, they appreciate that. It's it's otherwise it's it's extremely crowded. So I think it's 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 this is ventilation relief and congestion relief going on there. I've had this honey super on with drawn comb for about two weeks now, and there's just this the the, the the population in this colony just seems to be peaking right about now instead of dying down. And uh, so I'm really curious to see what they're doing with that honey super. So I'm going to dig in and see what happens. See what I find. I'm going to take a look in this hive and um, I'm doing it without any gloves and uh, but if I feel uneasy at any time I'm going to get out of here. 
The bees could be defensive because this is the time of the year they usually do get defensive. They, um, they want to protect the honey that they've been building up all summer. And uh, there's a lot of bees in here. So um, usually, in my experience, the more bees there are, the, the more defensive they get because one bee gives off the alarm pheromone and a lot more other bees can pick up that alarm pheromone and they all get in on the action. So if anything like that happens, I'm out. And I'm using spray, no smoke. I can already tell that a lot of the forages are out. We'll see here. This is the moisture quilt for ventilation. This is a little piece of wood that I used to lift up the moisture quilt and it's all propolized. Spraying them a bit. Just let them know that but fool them into thinking it's raining. Just to calm them down maybe a little bit. And if I get stung, I'm out of here. Not in the mood for that today. <clears throat> oh. Not too bad. But I don't think they're making honey. There's not enough bees up there. Okay. Right, maybe, yeah. yeah, maybe. Maybe not. We'll find out. <clears throat> this um, honey super doesn't have a queen excluder on it, so the queen could be up here. And just before I started rolling on this, I had a bee flying around the hive trying to buzz me in the face. So there are a few defensive bees around, I know that. As long as they go for my face and not my hands, I'm happy. Some bees there on the rim. Some people call it a spacer. Some people call it an ek. Alright, let's see. What, can you see this on the camera? Oh yeah, that's a good shot. There's a fair number of bees. And I'm just going to dig right into the middle. Whoop. And I'm going to get that bee buzzing me. I'm just going to spray him down. Pull this frame. Yep. Yep. I can feel it's already heavy with nectar. That's looking good. I'm gonna have to put this aside though. Yeah, right away you can feel the the, the weight of the uh, of the frame that there's, there's there's honey in it. Oh yeah. Let's see. I can't see what I'm doing, but there's nectar in there for sure. And this is a, on a foundationless frame, so I'm going to be able, if they cap this, I'm going to be able to cut this and make uh, comb honey out of it. I've never, I've never seen this before, where they peak in the middle of the, at the beginning of September. Usually they're, they're dying down by September. So this one's going to go. It's got a bit of a spot there where they're not building comb on it. So I'll, I'll pull that one out. I'd rather them concentrate all their efforts into these eight frames instead of ten frames. This is fun getting used to doing this with no hand, no, no hands, no, no gloves. Um, I got a little bit of propolis on me, but that's cool. I got bees crawling all over me, but they're not stinging me yet. So that's, that's good news. Um, I can't really pull those frames out without ungluing them first. So I got a, a trusty knife here and just go boop. Killed the bee. When I killed the bee, that releases alarm pheromone. And man, there's so many bees here, it's going to be hard not to squish them. Okay. Almost there. I'm not picking these frames up, I'm just sliding them over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight frames. They're not building any new comb, but they're filling the comb that's in there. So, good enough.
I'm gonna slide this. Uh, I'm gonna slide this uh, inner cover on, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna keep it open in the front, so there's a big wide gap up front because it's really it's a really hot day, and they're they seem to be enjoying that extra ventilation and extra room. Now I'm gonna put on a little a little piece of wood to give the bees uh, so the screen from the inner cover from the moisture quilt doesn't block up the hole. Plonk this baby down. So what we have here is a it's basically a ventilation rim with a screen on the bottom and the screen is being held up by that piece of wood so that the bees can come into their hole and walk down to that hole without being flattened by the screen or anything like that. And over here we've got the partially open, I've it open a little bit too much but I'm going to make that little slit that wide open gap there a little bit thinner because it's a bit too open uh, and here we go that's it, done and uh, here you can see the uh, one of the frames glistening with nectar melting in the sun uh, I'm going to put that in the shade, I'm going to let the bees clean that up afterwards and the same thing with this one they've got this space in the middle where there's no comb, I had to scrape off the comb from last year, and they have—they're not building new comb, but they're filling up the comb that's there. So um, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to see this. This has got a lot of empty space on it too, so I'm just—I want—I want full combs. So that's it. They've got eight combs in there, eight frames. Let's see if we can see inside. There we go. There's eight frames of uh, drawn comb in there, and they. Uh, Whew. and they're working it. So if they're working that, it usually means, in theory, that they've already filled up this top box and they're just working their way up, right? And uh, so hopefully the bees have tons of honey for themselves for the winter and I don't have to even top them up with sugar. Push this ahead. It won't get out of here. All right, it's... Um September 12th, 2017, a little note from my records. Um, the bees are just exploding in the heat and making lots of honey and filling this honey super. And then for the past three days, we've had nothing but rain and cold and the bees did not get out. And this is the first sign of life that I've seen since, they, since the rain, which really sucks because um, they were they were well on the way to filling that honey super and a cold spell like this might just shut them down and they switch their priorities to storing honey instead of making honey. Hopefully there will be enough warm days to get some honey out of them, but uh, maybe not. We'll see. I've, I closed up the bottom entrance there because um, the bees were uh, being attacked by... by um, I saw signs that they were attacked by wasps. So I had to clean them up. I think what happened is they were clustering because <clears throat> they were cold. They were clustering and they weren't fighting and guarding the entrance. And so wasps were just getting in and wrecking havoc on everything. So I had this reduced down to like a, a barely an inch uh, of, a, of a bottom entrance. But I just, I just poked it open a bit right now just to give them a little bit of air. <clears throat> so I hope there's, there's honey in there. I can, I'd love to be able to pull a frame of drawn comb out of there, foundationless comb, uh, because I have three frames of honey in my shed that I can replace that with if I have to. So that might be the, all, all I get this year. And there's the friggin' wasp already. So I might, I might reduce this entrance again just to be safe, keep the wasps out. Okay, the bees have been stuck in their hive for the past three or four days, maybe five days, because it's been raining non-stop and it's been cold all this time. So they've been just at the peak of their honey production when they were really going for it. Boom. Horrible weather sh shuts them down. Now let's see what they're doing now. Because today's the first day that they've had some sun in probably four or five days. And so there's going to be probably a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> foragers coming out as soon as they can making making up for lost time and there might be a lot of ba baby bees or new foragers uh, orienting to the hive and yep but uh, down there I had that I had the uh, bottom entrance shut down because there's wasps trying to get in and there's a wasp actually right here on me right now but I think they can they can guard that bottom entrance now so I will slowly open it up and try not to get stung <clears throat> Get rid of this. See, look, there's a wasp right there. 
There's a bunch of them. Oh, there's two of them. The wasp landed on me. Get down here. Okay. That's fun. Yeah, there's a lot of wasps out there. I'm gonna open up that bottom entrance so I'm gonna run the hell out, get the hell out of here. <clears throat> Just get this piece of wood out of here. <laughs> okay, there's one. Those are wasps. Good times. Now, see if I can get in and get that last piece of that last block of wood out. Unfortunately, I'm wearing a black t shirt, so. I'm not gonna, if the bees are defensive, I'm gonna get hit. Because black is like being a black bear. Da 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 da. Let's see if we can do this. La 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 la. Nice little bees. Put this over there. There we go. Now, that's, that's good enough for now. <laughs> I think they can, they can, uh, they should be able to guard that bottom entrance. There's <clears throat> a lot going on up here. I can see they're bringing in pollen. Still lots of drones. Uh, what else? Nope. Extremely busy bees. And right here you can see both of this our SS orientation flights, sort of whoosh, this sort of diagonal hovering in front of the entrance. So that's just new bees getting out for the first time. Or it could be a lot of the old bees stuck in the hive after three or four days reorienting. That happens too. So that's a lot of that, a lot of everything going on. But it's supposed to go up to, I think, 25 today. Yep, there's a freaking wasp. Look. Wasp are just. Wow. I have to put up I have to put up a wasp a wasp nest. A wasp a trap. Screw this. Um, eventually I'm gonna get a, a video of them killing a wasp. But right now I'm gonna leave them alone. Alright, it's um, September 19th, 2017, and it's 15 degrees Celsius, sunny, and it's 11 a.m. And the bees aren't going absolutely crazy. Um, they, uh, they had the f we had our first frost warning last night, so I thought that might begin to shut them down. They might start switching gears to winter preparations. But I haven't seen any uh, expulsion of the drones yet. There's still plenty of drones in this hive, and I haven't seen them kicking out the drones yet. And I know that once that happens, that's it. They've, they've crossed that line. They're getting ready for winter. Um, but I guess the, the you know, nectar is plentiful. Everything is plentiful right now, and the drones are living happily and being tolerated in the hive. And so I haven't seen them make that switch. I think it's... But usually it's, I, I, I've seen it as early as August. This has been an, a fun uh, year for watching a single hive, which is the only hive that I have. And seeing how it started off slowly in the year, and that I, and they weren't making honey earlier in the year, or at least not in that honey super. And all I did, other than the first hive re reversal in, in, in the year, uh, you know, reversing the, the hive was there and I moved it there and I just did some basic stuff at the beginning of the year. Um, other than that, and, and adding a third deep, I didn't, I haven't done anything, you know, I haven't done a lot and 
and they're just basically managing themselves. I take back what I said earlier today. Um, this colony, despite the frost last night, doesn't seem to be slowing down. Uh, I think it just needed that extra little bit of heat to get going today. And here you can see, I mean, I've got that wide open crack uh, opened and there's plenty of bees coming and going from that, doing their thing. No problem guarding against the wasps. So that's a big wide open gap, plus three holes in the top, plus a bit. And, uh, <laughs> and I got this wide open thing down here and they're, they're protecting it okay, they're guarding it fine. And this wasp trap is doing great. Killing all kinds of wasps. Yeah, these bees are, uh, you can tell by the, when, you, when they're moving fast, and when they're flying fast, and then they're zipping back and forth like this, like wasps, they're not in a good mood. And these bees, is, they're, not, they're not in a great mood. Okay, I'm going to give my thoughts about my beekeeping season so far this year. My beekeeping season with a single hive and uh, where I am today with this hive. <clears throat> um, first of all, this, uh, this wasp trap works perfectly. It, just, it attracts wasps, kills them and uh, traps them in there and only wasps no bees all i do is put a clump of uh, strawberry jam in there and they're good to go it just fills up with wasps and even having it right next to the hive and in this case right on top of the hive um, works well too i thought it would attract more wasps to the bees and maybe attract the bees to the wasp nest because it's so close to the wasp nest or the wasp trap but it didn't. It didn't matter. It, 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 putting it right where the wasps are attracted to the bees, which is around the hive, right next to the hive or right on the hive, not a problem. They're just they're just filling up with wasps, and putting it up within days, I noticed fewer wasps buzzing around the bees and buzzing around me. So <clears throat> it really does the job perfectly. I, it's simple. Just uh, I empty it every two or three days and put another clump of uh, strawberry jam in there and we're good to go. First I put in some sugar water with the strawberry jam but I don't think that's necessary. Just a little bit of jam, maybe a little bit of water just to mix it up and loosen it up a bit but that's it. Yeah so this colony, um, I've noticed that the honey in the top deep and the top honey super, um, they the honey isn't capped and uh, and I'm not sure why that is. Um, it might just be because the bees were making honey late into the season because they were slow to build up and they just didn't have a chance to make a lot of honey until the populations were large enough for them to make honey. And so they just, just everything's just delayed. It's possible because the, the colony started off much weaker in the spring than I anticipated. I didn't give it any sugar or pollen during the early or late winter, so the queen didn't start laying early, the population didn't build up. The foundationless frames that I put in the hive, I'm kind of edging towards just getting rid of foundation and the plastic foundation and replacing it all gradually with foundationless frames. So I, so I gave that a go and what happened is though I, I put probably three frames of foundationless, just new foundationless frames in the medium box, in the middle box, the middle deep, and probably another three 
or more in the top box. So overall, there was, you know, whatever, it's anywhere between six and eight, probably, new foundationless frames in the deeps. More wax is involved in the foundationless frames. And so more resources, more honey. They eat more honey to make those, those that comb. So it's possible that just all that honey that normally would have been in the honey supers went into making the, uh, more of that foundationless comb. Under here, I've got, so under this, this uh, ventilation rim or moisture quilt, I have a piece of hard insulation. And I just added this, but I could have used, I think I could have used this all summer instead. But what we have here, here you can see, look, all the bees clustering underneath that right now. And I gotta, the next warm day, I, I'm, I'm probably gonna clean this up and get rid of it. But anyway, on the really hot days, I could remove this piece of hard insulation and give them, and then put the top back on, and this would give them full ventilation, right? A massive amount of ventilation. So that if they're overheating and they needed to cure honey quicker, that extra ventilation would, wouldn't hurt. And so, but if, then, then at night, or if it was cold at night or any during cold days, I just put this piece of hard insulation back in. And it gives them a nice solid roof again. <clears throat> and yet there's still ventilation happening down the cracks, which isn't a big deal. And then I put this back on, and there, we're, we're back in business. But I think that's another little tweak that I think works fine for, uh, again, hobbyist beekeepers like me. And again, this is cheap as dirt to make. This is, this costs like, you know, $3 and that costs $5 to make. And the hard insulation is whatever, 10 bucks.